and the rest is controlled by Saudi Arabia. No one asks the question is that what the pro-Saudi, al-Arabiya, etc. are spreading. Pure sectarian hatred, systematic campaign uh, to demonize Shia across the Arab world, which is part of Saudi, uh, Saudi foreign policy that's been going on for the last six years. And the, the result of that is that the Arab public opinion, um, and uh, to be fair on the Jazeera, Jazeera Arabic, yes, there is a lot of progress to do in terms of covering of Bahrain, and it was muted. The Jazeera English, different story. They did to their credit tackle it. Of course, the activist in me will tell you more is always better. Uh, but uh, the reality is that the, uh, these are the decks, this is the deck of cards that exist. Deal with it as an activist. And a, a, a concrete example um, was uh, I personally was invited to a show uh, on the Jazeera English, and the issue of Bahrain came up. I didn't hold back. I made my point politely but strenuously. You guys need to cover Bahrain more, and you need to. Uh, not be part of the conspiracy of silence uh, that is reigning in Arab media uh, regarding Bahrain. And ultimately that um, in terms of uh, the coverage of um, Bahrain, if, uh, if you don't um, take part of, uh, if you don't talk about this issue, you're only reinforcing the nasty sectarian racist vibe that has been uh, pumped around and, and left unchallenged by Saudi media. Um, um, against the, the Shah of the Arab world. And that, that ultimate is not so much about um, the media itself. The, of course, the, 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 the politics behind it are geopolitics, nation states' agendas um, coming at play. But the point really is the ultimate challenge, which is sort of the elephant in this conversation, is that, okay, fine, we have this in, uh, fascinating and historic uh, um, opportunity to start reforming these societies. Are there, is this going to be an exercise in futility, whereas the sort of the, the window, uh, window opportunity is missed, or are we going to see the emergence of uh, institutions that would defend civil rights? Thank you. This is very important to, to understand the dialectic between the classical media and the new media, I would say. But besides the political agenda, besides the agenda uh, of the media sector, we shouldn't forget that these country, countries, especially when they have a very high rate of internet penetration, are not countries with citizens. They are markets. Okay. And this is the way they are seen by, by companies. There are markets on the one hand because there is a lot of uh, people who are um, um, susceptible, who, who, could, uh, who could buy uh, the software, but also there are markets be, because they have authoritarian regimes who uh, 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 that are willing to buy very expensive uh, software. And I would like, uh, now that we um, discuss a uh, little bit the role of uh, these uh, foreign companies, uh, in general uh, US companies, who are selling and advertising these uh, softwares and these equipments to uh, control the use of the internet, to uh, censor the, uh, the, the internet. I think, Moez, uh, you can uh, probably tell us the name of the company, <laughs> otherwise I would do this. Yeah, I mean, and uh, maybe uh, also the panelists, maybe Gillian uh, could also elaborate on this. Yeah, I can specify something for, uh, at the beginning. That, uh, in order, in order to achieve censorship policy in Tunisia during the regime, uh, there is a lot of money that's spent by the IGI in order to, to build uh, performant and efficient machine, a technical machine to censor and to filter and also to hack. It, they don't mention hacking because hacking is also a, a, a very well used to, to enter to Facebook accounts and, 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 to, and to change con contents. So there are a lot of equipments that are available today in IGI and are of course disabled. Uh, and those equipments, we have filtering equipments, for example, for categorizing all the URLs. And I can mention here the company uh, McAfee on yeah, smart, smart smart filter uh, that is categorizing the uh, the URLs, pornographic and the violence and so on. And th those equipments and other equipments that we have a contract 
for uh, many confidential, uh, uh, how to say, articles on, on those contracts. And until now, we, we as, a, as, as an uh, CEO today, I, I, I want to mention that we have, um, in, in respect to those contracts, we cannot mention the name of those companies. They work for us, and the art, we, those contracts are still available, still uh, of good uh, in force. And um, we, we think that uh, the future of those equipments will depend on legal frameworks and the will of the, govern the, the future government to, to, to have a neutral and transparent internet exchange point, which is ITR. So I think that um, uh, our, we are facing now a challenge that is transforming ITI from a machine for censorship to a very uh, trans a transparent and, and neutral internet exchange point with regards to the, uh, the best practices in the world. Uh, so, uh, in that, um, uh, of course, we, we, we know that all those money that is spent for, for censorship equipment and for filtering and for so on, uh, it's a shame for us because now all those equipments, how to transform them? We have many ideas, but it's very, it, it, it will require also more money to, to, to transform all those equipment. So, it's a kind of uh, a challenge that we are facing today and uh, the, the, the problem is that during the, this transformation, today we are facing also mortalities that uh, maybe later on I will, I will explain about it because today some of the Tunisian citizens asked ITI through the, the court to filter, to continue filtering some contents regarding the pornography and uh, some. So we, we, we are really facing, we have those equipment we don't want to use. We don't want to maintain, and we want to, to transform them. But at the same time, some people ask us. Sorry, some people ask ask us to, um, to to filter to, to filter again. So this is a, a, an issue, and we need time in order to transform all those equipments and to, to get rid of of them. Thank you, Julian. You had a piece, a uh, recent piece, you know, on the EFF blog on this issue. Yes, um, but I also um, I wrote a, a paper back in February that I co-authored with uh, Helmi Noman, a researcher in the UAE, um, and we looked at uh, four different tools, um, three American, one Canadian, so uh, and, and how those tools are exported and used by repressive regimes to filter the internet. And specifically, we were looking more toward political content, um, because yes, governments do filter pornography, and yes, I personally disagree with it um, at the government. Uh, several countries, for example, Qatar, the UAE and Kuwait, they're using a Canadian tool called NetSweeper. And uh, the funny thing about NetSweeper is that um, it blocks, well, it blocks, these countries block the pornography category amongst other categories. And included in the pornography category is everybody's favorite blogging tool, Tumblr. So Tumblr is porn. Why is it porn? Well, unfortunately, a lot of people use Tumblr for porn sites. And so uh, what happens is that you've got blank.tumblr.com or tumblr.com slash blank, but the entire domain gets categorized as pornography and then blocked at the country level. And so people in those countries can't use Tumblr. Um, in other countries, we found WebSense uh, was being used. I believe that Tunisia at one point in its history used WebSense. Um, Yemen also used WebSense up until very recently. And I have a funny story about Yebsense, WebSense, um, which is that I was told about a year and a half ago that my blog was blocked in Yemen. I said, that's strange. Why would my blog be blocked in Yemen? I don't talk about Yemen. So um, with the help of one of my colleagues, we wrote to the Yemeni uh, filtering agency and asked them to please kindly unblock my blog because I wasn't saying anything wrong. And they did. So that was cool. Until somebody at Voice of America told me that my blog was blocked at their office. And I said, that's bizarre. So I said, what are you using for software? And they said, WebSense. So it turns out that my blog was categorized as pornography, but get this, here's what's really tricky and here's what I think has serious implications for censorship. The reason that my blog was categorized as pornography was because on one single post from three years ago, I had an abundance of comment spam without links to porn websites that I hadn't taken care of. I didn't do my job, I didn't moderate my comments. But consider how easy it would be to mount an attack on someone and get their site blocked in a country that uses this tool just by leaving porn spam. Um, Cisco and Smart Filter are two others. Uh, Smart Filter was started by Secure Computing, bought by McAfee, and then McAfee was bought by Intel, so I don't even know who owns it at this point. Um, but these are all companies, the, the last three, WebSense, Cisco, Smart Filter, US companies that are exporting uh, filtering software to foreign regimes. Um, 
Also, as we know, the uh, the State Department through DRL funds circumvention technology. I can't remember the, the amount of money at the moment that was pledged this year. Apologies for that. Um, but so what we've got is our government funding circumvention technology, t technology to get around the censorship that companies from our country are producing. Um, um, fair <laughs> competition the, between them. Yeah. Give a specific example in, uh, in Tunisia. Um, while I was there, there was an, in the newspaper, by the way, you know, one of the things that, I think one of the takeaways from this section here of the discussion is, you know, the window's been open a little bit, some sun is shining in, some fresh air is blowing in, but by no means is this over. And there's a lot of sunk um, mentality, even among people who want more freedom, that it needs to evolve and needs to be changed and given the opportunity to change. Um, you know, we have, again, examples of websites set up in the mysterious many young men in their 20s in Tunisia who established websites mysteriously die in prison of spontaneous heart attacks. We had a phenomenon of that. Um, certainly with, you know, .tn being blocked, and then people had .fr, and they blocked that as well. Um, but while I was there uh, in the paper, and I will mention, by the way, in the Tunisian newspaper, it was required, there was a complete cult of personality, it was required that Ben Ali's photograph appear every day on the front page above the fold. And if that did not happen, the newspaper was shut down. And actually the first day I was there, there was a picture of me at a very Napoleonic desk with gold encrusted everything on it, and he's sitting behind it and talking with his own interior ministry. It's a minister. So the second day I got the newspaper and looked at it, and there he is again sitting behind this huge desk and talking with the interior minister of Saudi Arabia. And I thought to myself, this guy is clearly at the beach, right? Because he has all these pictures of himself. But there was an RFP in that newspaper um, from the, the Tunisian Computer Security Agency. So I learned about this when I was there. I said, oh, I, you know, I do a lot of work in computer security. I'd like to meet with them. So I went over to meet with the Computer Security Agency, and they just had a new head, a professor of computing who had been press ganged into being the head of the Computer Security Agency. He was told, this is your new job. You go over there and do this. And he had just been in the post a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, the basics of computer security to provide confidentiality, integrity of the system, and availability of the system. But instead, this computer security agency was devoted to turning all of that completely inside out uh, to spy on their own citizens. And so the RFP that was in the newspaper was from the Tunisian computer security agency announcing that they had received funding from the World Bank to build new critical infrastructure protection facilities with a back door to allow the Tunisian government to enter and track everything that happened on it. So it's these kind of uh, perversions within perversions that, that tend to occur. Mm -hmm.